After the events that we have seen throughout Goku's journey so far, everything we will witness from now on will be catastrophic events. By saving the universe once again alongside his friends, Goku is about to receive an invitation that will completely change his life. Welcome everyone to our next original saga about the Dragon Ball universe, Dragon Ball, Angelical War. Universe 7, Earth. On a peaceful day on Earth, Goku enjoyed moments of peace with his family. The sun was shining in the blue sky, and clouds hovered gently over the serene landscape. Goku, Chi Chi, Gohan, Goten and the others enjoyed a peaceful life after the countless battles they had faced over the years. However, this calm would be abruptly interrupted. Suddenly, a blinding glow filled the air, and a celestial figure appeared before Goku. It was Daishinkan, the Great Priest, a cosmic entity of great power and wisdom. Goku, legendary warrior, Daishinkan said with a friendly smile. I come to you with a special training proposal. An enemy of incomparable powers is approaching, and only you can rise to the challenge. Goku, always eager for a new adventure and eager to test his limits, readily accepted the invitation. With a nod of his head, Daishinkan opened a dimensional portal, transporting Goku to a distant, heavenly location, a realm beyond known boundaries. In this new space, Goku found himself in a vast cosmic training ground, where gravity, time, and the laws of physics were manipulated in incomprehensible ways. Daishinkan explained that this environment was crucial in preparing him for the approaching opponent. Goku asked, What a strange place, I feel a strange energy in that place, what is this energy? Daishinkan replied, This place is called Heavenly Dimension. Only those with divine angelic powers can access it, however, unlike the special dimension that was trained you and Vegeta in, the functioning of this dimension cannot be understood even by Zeno-sama. Daishinkan continued, In other words, only beings who possess the powers of divine angels can access this cosmic dimension. Goku, still confused, asked, without that. Does that mean that not even Mr. Whis or Mr. Beerus can get here? Not even Zeno-sama? So who is the creator of this dimension? Or did you find it? Daishinkan then replied, this dimension was created by the forces that truly created everything living. And these forces are collapsing, but your Saiyan power, which has the capacity for infinite evolution, could be the answer to putting an end to this and other problems once and for all. Daishinkan continued, in this dimension, you who possess the DNA of the only race capable of infinitely evolving your powers will finally be able to transcend. Ultra Instinct is just the first stage of the force of creation of all things. With Ultra Instinct you are able to sense danger and move in an instinctive way. With Ultra Divine Instinct you will reach the level of angels and after this stage, comes the final phase. In this final phase you must overcome my powers and Xenosamas as well. Impressed, Goku then asked but that would be incredible. However, if you want that from me, then it means that the enemy that is coming has absurd power, right? Daishinkan responds, exactly, Goku. But the powers I mentioned are not just linked to the power to destroy planets or the universe, I'm talking about the power to do practically anything you want. And for this to happen you will have to go back to the past, go back to your roots as a Saiyan, in the same way that Yamoshi was able to reach the divine key and you also did. Now you will have to do something similar but different from before you will have to reach the point of losing your existence to be able to recreate it again in this cosmic place. This way, you can do amazing things. So, stay here Goku and prepare your mind, go back to your roots and understand the essence of Saiyan power, only then will you achieve the true power to reach the third phase of Ultra Instinct, the true Ultra Instinct, the Cosmic Instinct. You will become a true god, Goku. And for this to happen, you will have to be reborn, so drastic measures are necessary. Cosmic prison exclaimed Daishinkan. After reciting a spell, several silver chains with a strange energy, the same strange energy that Goku was feeling when entering that dimension, appeared and trapped Saiyan who was struggling without understanding what was happening. Daishinkan said, you will stay here for as long as necessary. But rest assured, here you won't feel hungry, you won't feel pain and you won't feel fatigue, however, a lonely mind can do much greater damage than any pain or hunger, but this is necessary for you to be reborn, Goku. Understand, this is for the good of the universe as we know it, you will thank me in the future. Reborn Goku, becomes a cosmic deity. Goodbye, savior of the universe. Wait, I still have a lot of questions, wait. Goku shouted at the Daishinkan that disappeared in front of him. Mysterious place. 
Daishinkan appeared in a strange place, it was a huge garden with crystal clear trees that surrounded a huge and beautiful castle that emitted a dazzling light, it was as if it were paradise. Upon entering that castle that was shiny on the outside, but inside it was very dark, Daishinkan then found himself in front of a large throne that was in the middle of a large hall, and on that throne there was a figure that emanated an absurd power but his voice it was light and clear like a spring wind, that figure was called the Angel King. The hall where Daishinkan found himself was permeated by dense darkness, where only the Angel King's throne was illuminated by an ethereal light. The High Priest, still confused by his own situation, remained standing before the throne, awaiting the words of the mysterious wing figure. The Angel King, shrouded in shadow, slowly revealed himself as Daishinkan knelt down as a sign of respect. Its majestic wings stretched out, emitting a heavenly glow that contrasted with the surrounding darkness. His eyes, penetrating and full of wisdom, fixed on the great priest. Daishinkan, loyal servant, said the Angel King in a deep, resonant voice. You have been chosen for a crucial role in this next phase of divine existence. The angelic war approaches, and it is imperative that we be prepared. Daishinkan, still puzzled by the situation, asked respectfully, Angel King, how can I best serve you at this critical time? Why have you brought me here, to this mysterious place? The Angel King explained with unwavering authority, Goku is an unforeseen variable. He possesses unusual potential, but his non-divine nature is a threat to the heavenly order. However, we believe he can be molded into a perfect deity, unlike Xenosama, who proved to be a flaw in our divine plan. Daishinkan nodded, understanding the gravity of the situation. The Angel King's view of Xenosama as a failure intrigued him, as Xenosama was considered the king of everything. How can we guide Goku on his journey to become a perfect deity, and what does the angelic war imply for the universe? The Angel King revealed grand and complex plans, discussing the manipulation of Goku through carefully designed challenges aimed at honing his abilities and transforming him into a godlike force to be reckoned with. As for the angelic war, the Angel King warned of the growing tensions in the celestial realm and the consequences that would affect all universes. As Daishinkan absorbed the information, he realized he was facing a cosmic crossroads, where his choices would shape the fate of the gods. The conversation between Daishinkan and the Angel King continued, tracing the contours of an imminent conflict that would challenge the foundations of the universe itself. Daishinkan then asked, I understand your plans, my lord, but Goku is a good man, I wouldn't want to treat him that way. The Angel King then replied, I understand your frustration. But Goku is the only one who can achieve such power, his kindness can bring us true peace. Those who control the cosmic forces are ready to end Xenosama's universe, he failed. What we can do now is deliver an alternative and Goku is our last attempt to correct the error of choosing Xenosama for this position. Now go, my dear servant. Your next mission is to send this wonderful message to the cosmic gods, they are waiting for you. Tell them that the problem will be resolved soon and that they don't need to worry about Xenosama. Daishinkan then replied, understood my lord. But what about my children? Should I prepare them? What about the other Saiyan and warriors of the twelve universes? And the gods of destruction? Should I contact them too? Get your kids ready. Now about the Saiyan, only Vegeta and Goku's eldest son need attention, you will train them, while the gods of destruction, well, don't mention anything to them, they are in the service of Xenosama and something might come out of the plans. Said the Angel King. Got it, my lord. Existential Plan of Cosmic Deities With Daishinkan disappearing into the Heavenly Castle's garden, he emerged into an interdimensional space, a place beyond known boundaries. There, he found himself before three cosmic deities, the great cosmic gods who ruled over the order of the universe. The great cosmic gods were beings of immense power and wisdom, each representing a unique facet of cosmic balance. The Cosmic God of Order, Hokum, the Cosmic God of Energy, Hokus and the Cosmic God of Existence, Hazaras. They watched Daishinkan with sharp eyes, awaiting his words. Daishinkan, kneeling down as a sign of respect, began to recount the events that occurred on Earth and in the Celestial Dimension. He shared about the invitation given to Goku, the nature of training in the Celestial Dimension, and the imminence of the Angelic War. As Daishinkan detailed the proposal to transform Goku into a perfect deity, the cosmic gods listened intently. When finished, Daishinkan stood up and looked directly into the eyes of the great cosmic gods. He revealed the plan to hand over Goku as the new representative of the position held by Xenosama, 
arguing that this was the only way to correct the current supreme god's flaws and ensure the stability of the universe. The great cosmic gods, in their celestial majesty, exchanged glances with each other, evaluating the proposal carefully. Finally, the cosmic god of order, an imposing figure with a scepter of light, broke the silence. Daishinkin, what you propose is bold and risky. Zenosama, the current supreme god, has failed to act as the divine being of his position, and removing a being of such magnitude is not a decision we take lightly. However, we understand the gravity of the situation and the need for a leader better suited to guide the universe. The cosmic god of order continued, we will accept the proposal, but as a proof of your loyalty and subservience to the cosmic laws, you, Daishinkin, must carry out the removal of Zenosama from his position. This will demonstrate that you are acting in the name of order and will not allow personal interests to cloud his devotion to the laws that govern the universe. Daishinkin, without hesitation, agreed to the condition of the great cosmic gods. He understood the magnitude of his mission and the need to prove his fidelity to cosmic laws. With determination, he prepared himself for the imposing task that lay before him. The great cosmic gods, upon accepting the proposal, instructed Daishinkin to act quickly and discreetly. Zenosama's removal was to occur before opposing cosmic forces manifested, preparing for the imminent angelic war. With a solemn nod, Daishinkin withdrew from the existential plane of the great cosmic gods, aware of the responsibility that fell on his shoulders. He headed to Zenosama's palace, where he would begin preparations for implementing the plan that would change the course of the universe. Meanwhile, in the cosmic prison, Goku remained unaware of his next journey, wrapped in the silver chains that bound him. His training to achieve true ultra instinct, cosmic instinct, was about to begin, as cosmic events of epic proportions unfolded behind the scenes of existence. But what Goku didn't know was that this training would be more difficult than he imagined. He didn't have to endure great gravity or lift thousands of tons to become stronger, no, training was on his mind. With every second that passed on Earth, a thousand years passed in that dimension. And not having any sense of time would make Goku's mind increasingly insane and disturbed. Celestial Dimension How long have I been here? Goku asked. I feel like I've been here a long time. I don't. Please. I want it. Who's there? I am you, Goku. Said a shrill and high-pitched voice. Welcome back, Goku. You have returned. You have returned to yourself. Accept it, Goku. What's happening to me? Why can't I remember anything or anyone? Said Goku. Goku! This is my name? Goku asked the voice he had heard a short time ago. No, that is not your name. Not even Kakarot is your name. Come, come, come to me. Come to yourself. Be reborn. Said the shrill voice. Goku saw his entire life flash before his eyes. After all these flashbacks, Goku was in a difficult situation, his mind and existence were broken by time, he was no longer the same. Zenosama's Palace I'm sorry, Zenosama. This was necessary for the peace of the cosmic universe, Daishinkin said after defeating Zenosama. Daishinkin, after concluding the events in Zenosama's Palace, knew that his next task was crucial to the future of the universe. He left for Earth, where he would meet Vegeta, the Prince of the Saiyans, and communicate the developments that would change their lives forever. Arriving on Earth, Daishinkin found Vegeta training intensely in a mountainous landscape. With his imposing presence, he caught the attention of the Saiyan Prince, who received him with a mixture of surprise and caution. Vegeta, noble warrior, Daishinkin said in a calm, authoritative voice. The time has come to reveal the events that will shape the destiny of the universe. Vegeta raised an eyebrow, intrigued by the Grand Priest's words. What do you mean by that? 
Daishinkan then reported to Vegeta everything that had occurred, from the invitation given to Goku to train in the celestial dimension to Zeno-sama's removal from his position as Supreme God. He explained the imminence of the angelic war and the need to prepare the most powerful warriors to face the challenges that lay ahead. Upon hearing all this, Vegeta understood the magnitude of the situation. He knew it was time to team up with Goku once again, not just as rivals, but as allies in defending the universe. So you're telling me that Goku has been trapped in that special dimension for so long that he lost his consciousness? Vegeta asked, his mind working quickly to assimilate the information. Daishinkan nodded solemnly. Yes, and now he is unconscious, sunk into an undefined state of existence. But there is a chance that he will awaken, and when he does, he will attack. And that is where you come in, Vegeta. Me? exclaimed Vegeta, surprised by the revelation. Yes, you, confirmed Daishinkan. Goku will attack you with everything he has, using the ultra-cosmic instinct he is developing. But this will be an opportunity for you to develop your own latent power, Ultra Ego. If you can withstand Goku's blows and overcome them, you will emerge even stronger than before. Vegeta took in the Grand Priest's words, a fiery determination shining in his eyes. He was ready for the challenge that lay ahead, ready to rise beyond his limits and become a warrior worthy of protecting the universe. I see, Vegeta said, his voice thick with determination. I accept this challenge. I will do whatever is necessary to become stronger and protect our home. Daishinkan smiled, satisfied with the Saiyan Prince's response. Very well, Vegeta. Now, prepare yourself. The fate of the universe is in our hands. With those words, Daishinkan and Vegeta prepared themselves for the challenges that awaited them. As Goku remained lost in his own mind in the special dimension, the stage was being set for a battle that would shape the fate of the universe forever. Celestial Dimension Daishinkan led Vegeta through the veils of space and time, taking him to the mysterious celestial dimension where Goku was trapped. Upon arrival, they found themselves in a transcendental realm, where the laws of physics and reality seemed distorted. Vegeta looked around, impressed by the magnitude of the place. Meanwhile, in that strange dimension, Goku had finally awakened from his unconscious state. His mind was clouded, but his fiery determination remained unshakable. He knew a challenge awaited him, and he was ready to face it. Stay alert, Vegeta, Daishinkan said seriously. Goku will soon regain his consciousness, and when he does, he will come at you with all his strength. Vegeta nodded, preparing himself for the imminent confrontation. He knew that facing Goku would not be an easy task, especially now that he had mastered Ultra Cosmic Instinct. But he was also determined to showcase his own power, his Ultra Ego, and prove that he was a warrior worthy of respect. It wasn't long before Goku appeared before them, his aura pulsing with cosmic energy. His eyes narrowed upon seeing Vegeta, and he assumed a battle stance. Vegeta, said Goku, his voice echoing in that strange space. It's time to test our powers. Get ready! Vegeta braced himself, his fiery determination reflected in his gaze. He knew this battle would be intense, but he was ready to face the challenge. The battle began with overwhelming intensity. Goku and Vegeta exchanged powerful blows, their energies colliding in the air. Goku was incredibly fast and agile, using Ultra Cosmic Instinct to predict Vegeta's movements and react with precision. However, Vegeta didn't back down. He channeled his internal energy, summoning his Ultra Ego and manifesting incredible power. His determination and Saiyan pride strengthened his resistance, allowing him to withstand Goku's attacks and counterattack with ferocity. As the battle continued, Vegeta realized something crucial. He saw Goku struggle with his own inner demons, fighting to maintain his sanity while channeling the power of Ultra Cosmic Instinct. Remembering his own experience resisting the control of the giant ape Ozuru, Vegeta had an epiphany. Goku, called Vegeta, interrupting the battle for a moment. Remember what we are, we are Saiyans. We must not lose our sanity in the face of power. Just as I resisted my form Ozuru, you can resist it too. Goku looked at Vegeta, a flicker of recognition passing through his eyes. He took a deep breath, searching for the center of his own inner strength. Slowly, his mind cleared and he saw himself again as the determined warrior he always was. You're right, Vegeta, Goku said, his voice firm and determined. We are Saiyans, and we will not let power dominate us. With this new determination, Goku and Vegeta returned to battle with renewed energy and focus. They fought side by side, 
combining their powers and abilities harmoniously. Observing this harmony, Daishinkan realized it was time to intervene. He approached the two warriors, his imposing presence echoing in the strange space. Goku, Vegeta, Daishinkan said, his voice resonating with authority. You have proven your strength and determination. It is time to unite your powers in an ultimate fusion, a fusion that will transcend the limits of time and space. Goku and Vegeta looked at each other, sharing a moment of mutual understanding. They were ready to take the next step in their journey. Understood, Daishinkan, Goku said, his voice full of determination. We are ready. Daishinkan then began the Cosmic Ego Instinct Fusion Ritual, combining the powers of Goku and Vegeta into a single transcendental entity. A blast of energy enveloped the two warriors, fusing them into a single, powerful form. When the light dissipated, Goku and Vegeta emerged as a single entity, their combined power radiating in all directions. They became the embodiment of harmony between Ultra Cosmic Instinct and Ultra Ego, a fusion that could never be undone. Now, as the Cosmic Ego Instinct fusion, Goku and Vegeta were ready to face any challenge the universe could throw at them. With their combined powers, they were prepared for the impending angelic war and to protect the cosmos from the approaching threat. And so, with the two warriors united into a single transcendental entity, the story ends, setting the stage for the epic events to come. The fate of the universe was in the hands of the Cosmic Ego Instinct Fusion, an unstoppable force that would face any challenge with courage and determination. Daishinkin was catatonic with what he was witnessing. Finally the ultimate warrior had been born and order and peace could reign. Now, all you two must do. I mean, you must do is take Zeno-sama's place as the newest supreme god and king of all universes. Daishinkin said, looking at Gogeta in wonder. With the cosmic power, you must be feeling the other entities that govern the entire cosmos of existence, right? Daishinkin asked. Gogeta responds, yes. I feel a power similar to that of angels and yours, and my cosmic sense says that this is the angel king. There are three entities with powers superior to mine that must be the cosmic gods and there is also a whole powerful horde of angels, gods of destruction, cosmic gods and an angel king on a different plane. Daishinkan then responds, yes, those who are on a different plane are the beings who wanted to end our cosmic plane because of the conflicts created by us after the fight between Zalama and Zeno-sama and the creation of the twelve universes. Since those times, these cosmic entities from the opposite plane have been watching us. Our attitudes were generating waves of cosmic energies that were interfering in the cosmic reality of those entities. Because of this, an angelic war would happen, but my master, the angel king, together with the three cosmic gods entered into an agreement to remove Zeno-sama from power. He finished by saying Daishinkan. Gogeta then says, I understand, even though he had good intentions, Zeno-sama could not continue in the position that belongs to us today. Daishinkan responds, exactly, but the best part is that unlike Zeno-sama who needed to be activated by a button to make changes in this reality, you have the cosmic power and can do whatever you want in this reality because that button had the essence of Zeno-sama's life but his powers came from the three cosmic gods. So I know what I should do. Gogeta said in a confident tone of voice. I'm going to do a great reset in this cosmos from the point where Zeno-sama and Zalama started the dispute to decide which path the universes and all of creation would follow. I'm going to regress everything to zero and start all over again, however, this time I won't interfere at all. I will erase Zeno-sama and Zalama from existence, this way. Everything else will evolve without the customs and ideological interference of these two beings. By doing this, we will not have the creation of all the Dragon Balls, we will not have to manipulate young Beerus into becoming a planet destroyer and this way, Frieza will not receive the order to destroy the Saiyans. In other words, we will not have a great unbridled desire to seek power. I'm not saying it will be a peaceful existence but at least there will no longer be something like a tournament of power where several figures with absurd powers faced each other in an arena, that will end, said Gogeta.
Gogeta then joined his hands and created a wave of cosmic energy that threw a light on all parts of cosmic existence, everything regressed and evolved at a speed never seen before, but it ended. When it was over, instead of twelve universes, only one universe, one galaxy, four planets and a central star were created. The races naturally came together, there were great battles, but nothing that prevented the evolution of the universe, everything was fine. For now.